Do you still need help finding enough space in your small kitchen? Welcome to our next 12 DIY kitchen projects to help unlock your kitchen's hidden potential. From Simp Home, let's get into it. Number 12, a slim vertical shelf for the awkward surface and those olive oils. Use one X3 boards cut to length and screen molding for the front railing. Attach boards with screws, sand, and stain with outdoor semi-transparent stain. Use white nail polish to cover screw heads if desired. Secure to the wall with two small brackets using plastic wall anchors. Later, ensure your new shelf fits snugly before attaching them to the wall. Notice if you follow the lead, plastic wall anchors may not be the sturdiest option and could lead to the shelving unit coming loose over time. Number 11, an aesthetic wall-mounted pot rack idea. Follow the idea by preparing plywood pegboard, one by two boards, dowels, and shelves. In short, plot out pegboard holes on plywood and drill using a one-inch Forstner bit. Locate studs on the wall and hang bracing with two and a half inch wood screws. Hang pegboard on bracing using one and a quarter inch wood screws. Cut dowels to seven inches and shelves to the desired length and insert dowels and rest shelves on top. Your takeaway: ensure Ensure the pegboard is accurately aligned and leveled before drilling as any mistakes will compromise the integrity and visual appeal of the project. For added security, place a scrap board underneath when drilling to minimize tear out on the exit side of the plywood. Trivia: What if the idea failed your expectations? Number 10. A DIY sliding cabinet pot rack idea with drawer slides. Sick of digging through piles of hanging pots and pans? Then upgrade your kitchen organization game with this simple sliding pot rack. All you need is a piece of wood, cup hooks, and a drawer slide, which you can snag for under 20 bucks on Amazon. FYI, a dedicated pot rack organizer can cost you 60 bucks and above. Next, measure, saw, and drill holes for the hooks, then attach the wood to the elevated platform using other pieces of wood. Attach the drawer slide hardware to the front of the wood piece and secure it with screws. Attach the slide to the cabinet. Be mindful of heavy pots and pans and take care when sliding them in and out. Maximize cabinet space. Number 9. Shelf Riser Ideas from Tidbit Cami and the Sorry Girls Maximize cabinet storage space by making a shelf riser using wood cuts and a Craig jig. Use solid wood to ensure sturdiness and prevent the tipping of items. For other inexpensive options from the Sorry Girls, purchase a 1x10x8 shelving and cut it to desired measurements. Assemble using wood glue and screws, sand edges, and clean before styling on counters, cupboards, or open shelves. To ease your finishing, use varathane one-step stain and polyurethane in satin classic oak, which works as a stainer and sealer in one. You can apply the oil-based product quickly with a paintbrush. To keep your guests not accidentally taking the risers off the shelf, you may need to install several base magnets with mounting screws. Number 8. A Hidden Spice Door Idea Start by building a frame that can be joined with the existing door, allowing for a gap big enough to open the door with the spice rack attached but not so big that it looks odd. Cut shelves, glue, clamp them together, then measure and attach the molding to prevent items from falling off when the door closes. Cut, glue, and screw in the dividers for the concealed cabinets. Paint and attach backing boards, prime, and paint molding. Cut out the hole for the door handle and deal with the existing door. Shave off any overhang and test the clearance. Reinforce the hinges to support the added weight. One thing, be mindful of possible shifting during seasonal changes and acknowledge the challenge of dealing with old houses with no right angles if the right idea inspires you. 2 DIY Back-of-the-Door Shelf Ideas From 1x4 Boards 
customize it to fit your door size, and space the shelves apart for tall bottles or closer together for spices. It attaches easily with pocket hole screws and one and a quarter inch brad nails and can be painted to match your door. Remember, heavier items may not be a great fit if you constantly open and close the door and check that the door jam doesn't interfere when the door is shut. Feeling adventurous? Try making the rope version like the one from adelisomething.com. It is less complicated and gives upper and lower baskets and a customizable pegboard. Number 6. A DIY Pull-Out Pantry from Craftison To make one, you need to cut out shelves and spacers to the same thickness. Then build the frames, attach them using biscuits, and let them dry. Add wheels and check for the balance. For a seamless look, use a router to shape the front face. Attach it to the frame and add plain flat trim to hide the edges. Finally, sand and finish. Side note, humidity may affect the durability and stability of the shelves. Second, a router technique might only be feasible for those with the right equipment. Nevertheless, the final product has a unique and personalized design that can provide great storage space in a kitchen. Number 5. Three DIY Cutting Board Storage Checks one, from Carafid, make a shelf ledge from three boards and wooden dowels with pipe connectors. Attach to the cabinet using a nail gun and screws. Use a scrap piece of wood as a spacer and drill a hole through the cabinet for the dowel. Two, from Lumberjock, join a 16-inch backboard to a 10-inch shelf using 3 8 inch spacers. Use drywall screws to attach it to the wall. Number three, from Tommy and Ellie, measure the width of the inset part of the back of the cabinet. Cut and nail scrap wood together using wood glue and a finish nailer. Attach to the door with L brackets and paint to match the cabinets. As several side notes, pay attention carefully to the weight of the cutting boards and ensure the storage is strong enough to hold them. When removing the board, you may need to invest in a wood filler repair kit to fix your surface area. Next, challenges. 4. Repurposed a DIY garage cabinet to a functional kitchen cabinet. First, prepare pegboard sides. Materials cost about $55 for one cabinet, but you can reduce it by purchasing 4 by 8 feet sheets of pegboard and plywood to build multiple cabinets. Start by building a simple box with a pegboard on both sides, cut it into two parts, install a continuous hinge, and add trim and shelves. To keep your new storage lasting for long, consider the size and weight of items you plan to store and ensure that the cabinet it is properly secure to the wall to avoid injuries. Number three, an interesting sliding pegboard you can borrow to declutter your kitchen utensils like a pro. This DIY project solves clutter issues while hiding the visual chaos of hanging tools behind cabinet doors. The sliding pegboard can tuck away inside a cabinet and slide out when needed. To make the sliding pegboard, cut and paint the pegboard, then glue furring strips to the back and attach drawer glides to it. Afterward, mount spacers on the pegboard sides and attach them to the cabinet with screws. Once the pegboard is secured, arrange tools with different shapes and sizes of pegboard hooks. While this project solves clutter problems, be sure to use heavy-duty double-sided carpet tape to secure the pegboard so it doesn't shift or fall. Number 2. The under-cabinet drawer hack idea to hide small appliances, spices, utensils, and even coffee pods. This easy-to-make project only requires a quarter-inch plywood for the drawer bottom, one-third of the drawer box, and one-fourth of the supports, front, and trim board. Using side mount drawer slides makes the process easy. The slide size depends on the cabinet depth. If it's 12 inches, use a pair of 10-inch slides for each drawer. The size of the cavity defines the drawer size. Cut the fronts to fit the cabinet face, and there's no need for drawer pulls since the front drops an inch below the drawer to serve as a built-in lip. Lastly, number one, how to make a portable kitchen utility center with pegboard. 
Cut your pegboard into four pieces with a circular saw. Cut four 48-inch 2x2 boards in half with a miter saw. Place a bead of wood glue on two 2x2 boards and attach one piece of pegboard to make a wall panel. Secure it with four screws, repeating the process until you have four walls screwed together in a cube structure. Add casters to each corner of the cube to make it mobile. Hang your kitchen tools and accessories on the pegboard panels. The caddy allows you to keep all all your supplies in one spot and roll them to wherever you work. Well, that's it for now. Before you leave this presentation, we'd like to appreciate every second you spend watching this video. If we deserve more of your attention in the future, press the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Like the video if you believe it'll motivate the YouTube algorithm to push the video to more people. Honestly, though, it is more like a myth to us, so feel free to move on with your plan after the video ends. Lastly, we hope you have great luck with your health and project, and we'll see you again soon.